Hey, 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 nonprofit visionaries. This is Shalita, the nonprofit Easter O'Neill. I'm back again for another hashtag nonprofit no filter live on our new date and time. I know I switched it up on y'all, but you know, sometimes that's just how it is. I hope y'all are doing well. Come on in and let's have a conversation. Y'all know my mission. What's my mission? What's my mission? To help business owners and community leaders revitalize and launch nonprofit organizations that will rebuild their communities from the inside out because it is up to us to do that, right? So today we're gonna to be talking about building community partnerships as far as education is concerned. Now y'all know I talk a lot, a lot, a lot about partnerships in the community. Yes, we wanna do amazing things. We have great ideas and all of that greatness. But if we are not operating in a community context or partnering with other organizations in the community and entities, public private partnerships, then we're not going to get very far as it pertains to our impact in the community. So I have later on today or later on about a half an hour, I'm going to bring on John Brenner who is the director of early college initiatives at the University of Baltimore here in Maryland. And of course, y'all know I bring people on who I have collaborations with. So I don't ever talk to y'all about what you should do. And then I'm not doing it myself. Right. So JB, as I call him, uh, has been a friend of mine. I just actually met him maybe two years ago and it feels like I've known him forever. I was introduced to him by one of my mentors. It's all about who, you know, and we just, clicked immediately, right? And so he's in the education space. Y'all know my foundation work in foster care is also working in the education space. So we're while we're out here trying to deliver programming and all kinds of things, you know, okay, it makes sense to partner with educational institutions in the community in order to get the work done. So he'll come on a little bit later and talk to you a little bit more about that. So I want you to be thinking about your questions. You know, if you are a nonprofit that's in the education space, or, you know, maybe you're not specifically in the education space, but trust me, all of our work converges. It's very complex. It converges. So even if you're working in some other sector, I'm sure that education overlaps in there somewhere. So you definitely want to have educational partners or institutions in your community that as part of your collaboration. But before we get into all of that, I just want to check in with y'all. Hold up. Let me look at the comments. Okay, Patricia. All right, you said, hey, am I still doing the free 15 minute sessions? Yes, I am. I am. So just shoot me an email. Let me put it down. Um, let me put the banner up, okay? So that you know where to um, to email me. Hold up, you know what, let me, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put my information here, so. As y'all know, I, I have support now, right? So before it's been me doing everything, I actually have an executive assistant who is helping me, y'all, okay? So I'm gonna put um, right here, I'm gonna put this in here. So make sure you shoot an email, admin at shalitaoneal.com and just say you want the, the link for the 15 minute session so that we can connect. Okay, let me go back to the comments. All right, so hello. Hey, Nicole. Nicole Ashley, how you doing? And thank you so much. You said you're amazed by my story. Listen, you know, um, we all have a story and it's about how we use it, you know, to uplift other people, but to also heal ourselves first and foremost, right? Um, and so Patricia, so you said, okay, that's what I need help with. It seems like I can't find organizations to partner with. Yes. So let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, where are you looking? Where are you looking? Have you joined the Chamber of Commerce? Um, are you looking at maybe um, doing some research on other organizations that maybe are doing something similar to what you're doing? What coalitions are there out there that maybe you can, you know, you can be a part of? Maybe connecting, you know, give me a little bit more. Give me a little bit more. Um, okay, and then, if you are joining on Facebook, make sure that you click that link to give StreamYard permission to share your name, because otherwise I can't see. It just says Facebook user, but it says good morning or good evening, guys. So if you could just put your name next to your comment, 
then I'll know I want to shout you out. Y'all know how I feel about that. You know, I'm just, I got to put, I got to let you know. But, but, but everybody see, look, you see what it says? Facebook user. Good evening, guys. Hey, <laughs> tell me who's saying good evening so I can shout you out. Yes, it's even, I, I changed it from 12, what was it? 12.30 before p.m. Eastern to 5.30 because I know that y'all are working. You know, you've got stuff to do during the day and I want to be able to have it at a time where you can really, you know, sit down and, and, and chime in and be a part of the conversation. So what's going on with y'all out there? Check in with me. Who's watching? Hey, <laughs> Nina. Hey, Nina. Look, Nina is my dynamic intern from Coppin State University. She is in her senior year. OK, yes. Yes, ma'ams and sirs. Thanks for coming through, Nina. Oh, and Patricia, you said, wait, so I don't get to speak to you anymore. Yes, you, come on now. Yes, you can. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't going nowhere. Tell me what's going on with you. Any questions you have about anything? Like, how are you dealing with your board members, fundraising? You know, now we've had the second round of the PPP and nonprofits are eligible for that. So have you taken advantage of that? I know I'm, I, I am for my nonprofit because I didn't the first go round and I was kicking myself for that. I was like, I should have, because we really did take a hit as well, um, you know, from COVID and everything, because the event that we used to have that brought in funding for our program and we couldn't have it because, you know, all the events were shut down. So I should have done it, didn't do it. But now the second chance I have, I've filled it out. Um, and it wasn't as cumbersome as you would think. So have you taken advantage of that? Let's talk about that. Um, Monique from Do More. Hey, Monique. Another community partner, okay, that's doing big things in the community with young people, artistic expression, poetry, you name it, you know, giving a platform for the voices of our young people, which we often do not do effectively, right? So, um, okay. Um, Sam. Hi, Sam. How you doing? Hey, Ella. Oh, y'all coming through now. See, I knew 530. Okay, look, you got to give people time to breathe at the end of the day. Okay, I'm glad y'all are here. So, Nicole, so you said having a hard time receiving donations on your website. Uh, you're still waiting on IRS to approve your 501c3. Okay, and so just have a little bit of patience, right? Because technically, um, you know, it can't, until you get your 501c3 status, it's it's not tax deductible, right? So maybe, you know, maybe that could be something where people are like, ah, oh, I want to wait until she gets her, you know, 501c3, the official 501c3 so that I can get a tax deduction. Or y'all know how I feel about our networks and starting off with the people around you or the people who know the people that are around you and their networks, because they're more likely to give donations, even though you may not have your 501c3. People will give you $50, $100 here and there, you know, don't really expect much in return or, you know, much of a tax deduction, but you have to start, you know, with the people that are closest to you um, as well. So don't give up, you know, and take advantage of that. My email is, is running down the bottom of the screen here. Oh, I still got the comment up. Hold up, hold up, let me take it down, hold up. Um, so, you know, send an email there if you're interested in a 15 minute, just kind of check in um, and I can, you know, give you some specific um, feedback about that. Maybe some things that maybe we can, you know, um, you can work on. All right. So then. All right. So then let's see. You, OK, yes. Yeah, 501c3 is hurting um, this is the nonprofit due to not being tax exempt yet. Yeah. Give it some time. And depending on what application you file. So if you filed the long version, the traditional one, and you can let me know in the comments um, um, if you've if you've done the traditional one, which takes that can take like six to eight months, or if you did the 1023 EZ, which is the shorter version, and you typically get that back quicker. You know, my clients, some of my clients have gotten it back as quickly as three weeks, four weeks. So you know, reach out, we can talk about it. And you said, how can you get it without employees? Right. So, and, and this is, this Ella, let me see. Ella, I think that was your question. Yep. Ella. Um, 
And so I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm the expert on the PPP because I'm not. But I know I don't have employees. I have subcontractors. So, you know, and then even if your organization, if you're taking uh, a salary or a stipend or something like that from the organization, then you're considered not necessarily an employee, but a subcontractor. It's it's payroll. Right. So it's. But if you go in and you start that application, they have a number in there that you can call to reach out if you have any specific questions and they'll be able to help you with it. But that's, you know, I don't have technical employees either. And I was still able to apply. I hope that was helpful. Um, is it, hey, she needed this again. Hey, Kim. Yes, come on, reach on out to me so we can, we can connect. Okay, we can reconnect. All right, look, I'm going through the, I'm going through the, hold up, hold up, let me see, let me see. Oh, Nicole, so you said you were in foster care also. Your nonprofit helps recovering addicts and treatment centers. Love it. Where are you? What state are you in? Y'all got to let me know where you're joining from. Okay, I love that. I love meeting fellow, as I call, you know, everybody doesn't consider themselves an alumni of foster care. We, you know, some of us will call ourselves that as a way of sort of shifting the negative stigma of leaving the foster care system is something that we did accomplish, you know, whether it was a situation we were, we wanted to be in or not, but we're here. And so, you know, it's, it's good to meet other people who have similar experiences because we out here doing good things, running nonprofits. Okay. Yes. Yes. Congratulations to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you, and Sam said 10, 1023 easy. You got it back in three months. Okay. You know, that, that's better than the traditional one, right? And maybe there was, if they had questions and especially right now with COVID and everything being backlogged, it takes a little bit longer for applications to, to get through, but you got it, right? So congratulations to you. Let's see, whatever comments we have, what we have here. Uh, oh, you in Pittsburgh. My husband is actually from Pittsburgh, Homestead. All right, yes. So what else is, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody's um, question or anything. Cause I, I want you to tell me what is going on. Have, is here to support me. Yeah, Kimberly Holmes. That's my girl out there. Black America cares. Hey, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So tell me what, what else, what else is going on out there y'all? You said you surprise now I help others to do it. Bless you. Yep. And that's the and that's the thing. Right. So I know that sometimes there are people that will reach out to me and say, well, I want you to do this process for me. Like I, I want you to file the paperwork for me. And not that I can't do that, but it's important. Each one teach one. It's important for you to know what goes into the structuring of your own nonprofit, not just because you need to know it. But also because there was going to be other people that you interact with or that come, you know, you cross paths with who need the same type of support that you needed. And now that you have the information, you'll be able to help them with it and help them to do it the right way. Right. Because not everybody has the means to be able to pay a coach or pay a consultant. But if we can help each other in those ways. So it's important for you to be, um, you know, to, to, to be knowledgeable about what's going on with the structuring of your organization. How y'all boards doing out there, huh? How, how's it going? How are your boards active? You having your board member orientations? Okay. Yes, Black America cares. And I, and I love what you did, Kim, where you started the Facebook group for people who are looking for board members. So if, can you, Put that in the comments, please, like the link to and then I can um, then I can share it. I can broadcast it because if anybody is looking for board members, like anything that we can do to help each other tap into different networks, we need to do it because there are so many people out there who are looking for boards to join. You know, you might be also need to join. And that's another thing that I tell you guys all the time that you need to sit on somebody's board. If you are going to know how your board is supposed to operate, then you need to sit on somebody else's board to see how that works from the inside out. And of course, not just to be nosy, 
you know, we can be nosy sometimes, but not just to be nosy, but to be of service and of support and you're learning, but at the same time, of course, contributing, but join some boards yourself if you're not already on a board. Okay, so Sam said, let's talk about them inactive board members and how we can stay more motivated. That's right. But you know what? I tell I tell I tell y'all all the time. A board member relationship is just like any other relationship, funding relationship, friendship, whatever. You have to put time into it. After people say, yes, I want to be on the board. This is great. I'm energized. I'm, you know, you have to make sure that your messaging is right and that it's clear on what you want board members to do. What are they being held accountable for? Are they coming in and there's no board member expectations and, you know, there's there's no accountability put in place. You're not clear on the type of people you're looking for or the type you're just like, hey, oh, you want to help? OK, great. You seem nice. No, we have to put efforts into it. We have to make sure that we're consistently training the board, you know, through retreats having consultants like myself come in and do trainings on resource development or on governance, or you have to do your uh, team building. So everybody connects with each other and gets to know each other so that the founder of the organization doesn't have to do everything. It's a process. It's a process, y'all. You know it. You know, it. look, you got to love on your board members too and have some, some expectations and they're going to have some expectations of you too. Um, Nicole, you said, um, good, good boards are active, but we are at the standstill until funding comes. Right. So here's another thing. Do you have in your bylaws or in your board member expectations, do you have a minimum amount of what your board is supposed to, to donate because your initial funds. And I've, I've went over this in a previous uh, presentation or, um, discussion where, you have different types of revenue sources. And of course, in order for you to get to the bigger ones, like the grants and, you know, the fee for services and things like that, you have to have your board has to be 100 percent giving. And I know with my board, there's an expectation of a thousand dollars a year, which is like eighty dollars a month, not even that. Right. Um, so starting with them and the expectations with funding there, because once you start trying to get foundation dollars, they're going to be asking, do you have a hundred percent board that, you know, giving on your board? And if you can't say yes, then, you know, if your board members are not giving first, then you can't make a case for anybody else to give to the organization. So, you know, just kind of uh, tapping, tapping into their resources. And so Patricia, so you say, okay, so maybe, okay, we start. So maybe I'm not looking hard enough. My organization is for youth aging out of foster care. And right now I'm starting my mentorship program, my outreach program in my dream closet. Okay. Where are you again, Patricia? I need you to, I need you to, um, I need to know where you are because then maybe I can um, connect you to some folk. Cause you know, foster care is my jam nationwide. So, um, you know, but part of it is to also connect with some of those organizations that work in that, you know, in foster care. Also checking in with the agency, your foster care agency, depending on what state you're in. Uh, every, every state has them, whether it's social services administration that's responsible for child welfare, whatever agency that's responsible for child welfare. Reach out to the, uh, the outreach person or the person that's over foster care and see, you know, you're a stakeholder, like you have resources that you want to offer. What do they suggest to you? Another thing, you know, I just want to reiterate is when you first start your organization, the majority of what you're doing is research. I know we want to jump in to get in the money because we have all these ideas and we want to deliver our programming, which is wonderful. But you have to do your research first. You have to make your connections first. You have to know who's in charge of what and when you're meeting those, depending on what issue area you're working on, if it's education, child welfare, whatever the case may be, you need to know the state agency contact. You need to know about some of the other nonprofit organizations that are doing similar work or who may be getting funding from the state to do certain work. You need to be in on those meetings that they're having. You need to be at the table. You need to do your research. And every time you're doing what some people call an informational interview with these people, you need to be asking, who else do I need to speak to? 
give me a list of names of other people that would be interested in maybe partnering or who I should know in the community. And you're, that is the majority of your time. I want to say the first year is getting to the right people and creating or assembling, y'all know I like your tribe, building your tribe. Because if you do that and you invest time in that, then people are gonna be coming to you about funding opportunities. I get emails all the time about grants, right? And from people who make decisions at the place, you know, that is giving the grants. And not to say that that, that means I would get the grant, but it, it, it means something good when somebody who has funding or was part of a funding collective is sending you a message because they know that you do this work and they wanna hear from you. But if they don't know who you are, but you're trying to reach out and get money to do stuff, okay? We don't wanna put the cart before the horse. I know it takes time to slow down and have some patience, but it's all in divine timing. There is no rush. There is no, you are going to do the things that you need to do in the time that you are meant to do it and no sooner. So you might as well slow down and take your time and do it right. Okay. What else, who, what else we got? What, who else? We, okay. So I'll kind of, okay. So, um, so Patricia, so you said, okay, here's the Facebook. Okay. So Kim, I don't, it didn't, the Facebook link, where is it? I don't, it's, you see, it didn't come up. You might have to type it in, type it in because you know, it's a stream yard. I'm, I'm not sure if it translates over, but Patricia, so you said you've contacted the foster care agency and maybe three shelters that shelter you for the dream closet. I would like to provide free clothing to children in and out of the foster care system. Um, okay, good. So you're, you're contacting the foster care agencies. Also legislators, who are the legislators, council members, who care about foster care or children. You need to know who they are because they have budgets too and they know people too and they love to connect people to people. So, and then the funders. Okay, so if you know the foster care agency, who's funding these foster care agencies? The shelters, who, who's funding the shelters? What foundations are funding the shelters? Then you need to reach out to the grant manager or the program manager at those foundations and ask for a meeting just to kind of, you know, learn more about what their priorities are outside of what you, you know, do your research first, but to let them know what you're doing to get your, your organization on their radar, not to ask for money, but just to make those connections and then ask who else do I need to connect with? Because funders love to connect you to other people that they give money to. <laughs> so, okay. But just and you said that's what you've been doing and your brain hurts, which is it's OK. You just breathe. And I'm going to ask your, your board. Right. Tell me about the board. Is the board actively helping you with this? Because it should not be all on your shoulders, because that's how you get burned out. OK, Niambi. So you said, hey, thank you for all the information and guidance. Do you still offer mentor coaching sessions for those interested in starting their nonprofit? Absolutely. Absolutely, I do. And I've got my email running across the bottom there. If you wanted to, to reach out for the link for the 15 minute um, consultation, just to kind of see what, what it is that you might need. But yes, I do. Um, I'm still taking clients for nonprofit coaching. So reach out. Um, let's see. Okay. And then Sam, so Sam, oh, what, hold up. Sam, Sam says, if you can't do your work without money, rethink why you are serving. Funding is great, but can you work with passion before the funding? And you have you have a point there, OK, because a lot of relationships, especially with those other organizations in the community that you might be wanting to partner with, you're going to have to offer something first. But this is all about building trust. You can't just come and say, hey, I have this nonprofit and I need fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh, you and everybody else. But that's why it 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 benefits you to be at the table on these committees or at these meetings, whether it's town halls, whether it's convenient, whatever it is, right? You need to be at the table to see what the needs are in the community and from community members, from other people that have been doing the work. And then, you know, see what, if, if there's something that you can do without getting paid for it, do it. And it's not, I'm not saying overextend yourself and then, you know, pick up a whole bunch of volunteer things that you're responsible for that you that just stresses you out. No, I'm going to say one of my my mentors, she came on um, 
a couple of a couple of weeks ago, Brenda Donald, the director of DC Child and Family Services, and she shared how she became aware of me and my organization. She knew who I was before I knew who she was because I went on what was I think was in Annapolis and was testifying on a bill that had to do with foster youth. And, and I was advocating for why foster youth needed services. I told them about the organization I had and why our work was so important. And she was like, oh, I wanna support them, right? Because I didn't get paid to come on to Annapolis and testify that I volunteered my time to do that because it was a passion that I had that fed into the nonprofit and other people saw me there that was like, I want to, I need her support or I want to support her. And that led to her becoming my mentor. And over the 10 years I was doing this work, she, no matter what capacity she was in, she made sure to support me, whether it was financially, whether it was as my mentor. So that's how things happen. So Sam, you're right. You're going to have to be prepared initially to just show up, right. And, and show people, why this is so important to you and your passion and then get the support afterwards right that's 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 part of it um so okay so cancel so here you go so there's the link y'all y'all screenshot it write it down click on it if you're looking for board members you want to be a board member you need to join her facebook group and you also need to join i know some of you might be joining from the nonprofit visionary academy facebook group but if you're not, you need to join that group as well, because there's a bunch of us nonprofit visionaries in there sharing successes, sharing support, sharing um, information and resources there as well. Um, OK, so let's see. Uh, OK. Let's see. What else we got? Hold on. Yeah. OK, so Patricia, so you, so you said your board isn't helpful. Okay, so then we got to take it back to the drawing board. We got to take a step back, okay? Because this is not a one a one person show. If that was the case, you should have started an LLC. Okay, this is a nonprofit, which means you're supposed to have a team behind you to help you to do the work, and the public is also supposed to help you because technically the organization belongs to the public. It's a 501c3. So I would encourage you to take a step back and, and reevaluate who's on your board, who you need to add to the board before you, you know, keep moving forward with, with spinning your wheels with funding. Get your team together. Get your team together. And OK, so Ella, so you say, how can I get the templates? So if you go um, if you go on my website, so ShalitaO'Neill.com and go to store, you can get the templates there. And, and she's talking about the nonprofit, um, the nonprofit template heaven. That's thirty seven dollars. I have over 60 templates in there from funding proposals to to um, startup documents, to job descriptions, to you name it, event planning templates. It's all in there. So go to the website and, and make sure you you um, download it from there. OK. Okay, just started the nonprofit. Okay, yep, Nicole. So you brand new. November. Okay, look. Breathe. Woosaw. Right? We've got to get the structure in place. We got to take our time to make sure we do what is needed, you know, what's necessary, so that as you're building, you know, you're going to be successful in the work that you're doing. You're not going to get stressed out and burned out because we are doing stuff out of order. So if you started in November, then you still have the names of the people who you put on that application, that 1023 application. And we, you know, want to make sure that if they're not the right people, then you need to leverage them to get other people. So if they're like, oh, we're just on the paperwork and that's it. Like, okay, wonderful. But who else do you think knowing what this organization is going to do? Who else do you think would be interested in being a board member and helping us move the work forward? We have to put the effort into your board members because if you don't you're going to be doing everything by yourself and that's not why you did that's not why you you filled out that paperwork okay um and sammy said i advocated for a house bill and it passed then it happened again then it made it to the fcc then kim saved the day that's how i got here yes see y'all know who your legislators are know the people who are making the, the bills, okay, introducing these bills into legislation 
especially if they are inter they are influencing the work that you're doing. You have to know that because they are they are pretty well connected and they will connect you to other people. Okay. Um, and then you said, okay, so Patricia, so you said, do you have any suggestions on how do I find the right mentor in my field? That's once you are at the table, right? Once once you are a part of committees in the community, you are going to the, the convenings, right? You you have to be connected first, and then you'll be able to see the people who one that you align with and who you would want to reach out as a mentor, you know, to have to have as your mentor. But you can't, you know, you Googling ain't just gonna do it. Okay, doing a search on LinkedIn that might that might be helpful in some cases, but we're talking about community development, and that's and I probably will have another discussion just specifically about that because y'all know I'm a spiritual herbalist, so I've been studying herbalism for a few years now, and that's it's a lifelong thing, so it's not like I'm you know I know everything I need to know, no, but as part of that that program, we're also being taught about what and it's an African centered program, so you know it's it's being reminded of what community truly means because here in the Western world, we have a very false sense of what community truly means. Just because you have something in common with someone, hold on y'all, this my, my space heater started smelling funny. I don't want to catch on fire here, but just because we have something in common with a group of people doesn't necessarily mean that's a community, right? So we need to start looking at what does a healthy community truly look like and how as individuals, can we be a part, like being healthy parts, individuals, part of communities? And that is what all of this work that we're talking about, community building, like knowing what you're good at, knowing what your purpose is in life, knowing you know what you bring to the table, and then also being a part of a community that can pour into you to help make sure that you can do that thing that you're good at for the community. We really have to get good at that. And we're always in the silo, like we're over here, like I'm doing my work and I just want people to help me and I invite people to come in and help me when I need something. But no, we need to open up and be an active part of the community and see how can I be of service? How can I be of service? What meetings can I go to? How can I volunteer for another organization in the community that's doing similar work or something that I care about? Because then that organization is going to introduce you to another one that's going to introduce you to another one. But it's going to introduce you to people who you didn't have access to before, who can either be wonderful board members, who have access to funding. Like, but you have to open yourself up to trusting and being of service first before you can expect that anyone is going to give you anything money or whatever the case may be okay so that that is what my suggestion would be is to spend some time and i'm not saying you haven't done it i'm just saying how much of yourself have you actually given because when you are given yourself in that way you are going to naturally organically authentically meet other people who align with where it is you're trying to go and what it is you're trying to do. Okay, that's just my little two cents. That's just my little two cents. Um, oh, and, it's, and Sam has a, a word of encouragement. Stick it out. After year five of marketing, you will find your sweet spot. Do not give up. You didn't start this work just to be done next year. That, that's, what, that's what gets me. We were like, oh, I got to hurry up. Hurry up and do what? I got to hurry up and get this money. I got to hurry up and hurry up and hurry up. Where are you going? Slow down. Breathe. Okay. <laughs> the purpose is to create lasting impact in the community, to uproot those things in the community that are no longer serving the community, that is a disease to the community, to uproot it and plant some, some new, refreshing, innovative solutions for the community. That takes time. So take your time and slow down. There is no rush to get anywhere. Now, I know you'll say, well, you know, the people that I'm trying to serve, they don't have all day. They don't have all year. They need help now. You're right. And there are other people in the community who are have stepped up that are, are helping. And that's another thing that we have this, this conversation like nothing's happening in the community. I got to start this because nothing's happening. But have you taken the time to really look at the grassroots efforts that have been going on in the community for years? Right. 
because there is work going on. And how can you support their work while at the same time learning something that's going to inform your work and make sure that you're filling gaps and not recreating right and overlapping with other people because you haven't taken the time to see what is actually needed. OK, but stick it out, like Sam said, stick it out. Okay, Hang in there. Listen, it takes time. <laughs> yes. Um, and then so, OK, so Niamh, you said I'm learning patience and being OK with sitting in where I'm on this journey. Yes, I've had this vision for nonprofit work for six years, but I've had to get myself together for this. And I'm going to tell you all before. Look, because John is a, John. My JB is in the green room, right in the back. I'm going to bring him out in a second because I want y'all to hear from him about this. Because y'all know I talk to you all day about collaborations, but I want you to hear it from a partner in the community and his perspective of what it looks like. Right. But yes, like having having your patience. We have to get ourselves together for this work because most times we're doing this work because it's very personal to us. We have a personal story. We need personal healing and we might be on our own personal journeys, you know, with that healing. And this is also a part of that healing process. So we also have to be gentle with ourselves, be compassionate with ourselves and know that every where you are right now is exactly where you're supposed to be. Trust it because the organization that you think you're building, it's actually building you. I'm going to say that again. The organization you think you're building is actually building you. This is a part of your growth and your development. It's going to teach you some things about yourself that you probably knew, may have ignored, maybe didn't know, didn't see it in the same way. And it's going to bring some things to the surface. And you have to be aware of where you are in your own healing journey. And you have to be aware of your own things because this is whole process is going to upheaval all of it. OK, so make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. And Patricia, look, she said, look. She's been doing the work for the past 11 years, but now she's in a new state and finally became a 501 C3. So then that takes cultivating the relationships there and the new state. Who's who? Who do you need to talk to? You know, applying that that same method and process to where you were to where you are. Right. Look, <laughs> Patricia said, look, I went back to therapy just for my non listening. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't nothing to be ashamed of at all. I know the times I'll be like, mm. sometimes you got to remind yourself of why you started in the first place because it could get real stressful. Okay. Well, keep the questions coming. Okay. I'm going to right now. I want to hold up. Okay. So, John, let me tell you. So, JB gave me a heads up. <laughs> My poor JB. He said he's not feeling the greatest. No, it's not COVID. OK, he's not feeling the greatest, but he was not going to cancel. He said, I may be looking crazy, but I'm going to come on here and I'm going to talk to your audience and I'm going to be helpful, as helpful as I possibly can. But I like I told you earlier, I met John through one of my mentors where I was looking for um, looking for a location to have one of our conferences and then also just looking for partners because we work with young adults who are in or from foster care specifically around education and wanted to make sure that we give them added layers of support to help them get through whatever educational program, post-secondary edu educational program that they are in. And so my mentor was like, well, you need to meet John Brenner at the University of Baltimore. And I was like, OK. And so we met and I was just like, Man, I feel like I know this man forever. He's just so personable. And he, even though he wasn't in the foster care system, he has, he, he came from an upbringing that was challenging, right? So he can relate to the students that he works with in a way that maybe many others cannot. So we, we clicked right away, but I'm, I want, look, let me, let me, I'm going to add you to the stream. You got to cut your camera on, John. Okay. <laughs> hey there. Look, you got, you He's going to call me and tell me that he's looking a mess. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> you got your glasses on. And my reading glasses on. Uh-huh. You got look, you got your jacket on. You look you look healthy. You look like ain't nothing bothering you. Thank you for joining us. I know you're not feeling well, but thank you for being here. I am I'm very glad to be here. So good evening, good people. Yes. Uh, thanks for having me. I listen. I listen to Shalita's words, and I'm inspired. 
Thank you. You know, but you know, if I'm not telling the truth, you know, you can call me out on it. You're like, no, actually. You know, I will. <laughs> I know you will. I ain't playing around. I know you will. But I want to read your bio too, because I want people to give people a little bit more insight into who you are. So John is a lifelong resident of Baltimore City. And like I told you earlier, he is a director of early college initiatives at the University of Baltimore, but he's also um, B Power lead for the University System of Maryland. So ECI, which is the early child, the early college initiatives, and B Power are drivers for the expansion and implementation of college and workforce opportunities for city school students from middle school through high school through dual enrollment and college readiness programs. So I participated in a program that was dual enrollment when I was in high school too. I was a senior and I was also taking um, taking courses at a community college, which was really helpful when I wanted to, you know, um, transition into, into college. So look, as a high school dropout at 16, Brennan knows the transformational power of education firsthand. Having since earned, check this out, having since earned a GED, an AA at Baltimore City Community College, a BA at University of Baltimore, a MALA at St. John's College Annapolis, and an MBA, okay, at the University of Baltimore. I don't want to hear nothing about what you can't do because of where you came from. Mm -mm, not after I done met JB. Brenner is dedicated in his work to provide higher education opportunities to students of color and underserved populations in Baltimore and to bring together and work with stakeholders in this mission throughout the city. So yes, JB, tell us more about your professional journey. Like what made you choose? I mean, you have a whole bunch of degrees, so I can see how <laughs> the education field has called you, but what has brought you here? That's some alphabet soup, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Yes, it um, is. <laughs> yeah, that journey that journey began so long ago. It's it's uh, it seems like I well I was a different person, but mm -hmm. my family culture was not about education. I come from a working class family uh, from the city. We grew up on the east side, and um, nobody, no male in my family earned a high school diploma, and no one in my family went to college. So it, this just wasn't something we knew about. Um, and, and when I was a teenager, I, I'll admit I was. Uh, I took a lot from the city when I was a teen. I'll just say, mm -hmm. I'll just say, like that. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, but when I got my GED, I knew, you know, after getting in trouble for a few years, uh, I knew I had I had to do something, or I was going to wind up where a bunch of my uh, friends were. And uh, I went and got my GED. I studied for two weeks, old school, right? Went to the library, studied for a few weeks, and uh, and took the test. And I, they sent the results back, and I was in like the top two percent in the country of people wow. who took it. And I didn't, I didn't know that. Nobody ever told me I could do something like that. I was always like the smart kid who got in trouble. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, no, nobody said. So I was like, oh boy, I got to go to college. I can't, I can't just sit on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the beginning. And when I went to B Triple C, uh, my whole life changed. I was around people who I felt uh, where I belonged. It was a diverse place. It felt like the city. Uh, all the nonsense I grew up with wasn't around there. Uh, so, and I never stopped. You know? uh, clearly. <laughs> well, I did stop a few years ago. I think I'm done. I, don't know, I was thinking about a law degree, but I think I might, I might be done. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Well, I think you never stop learning, you know? Yeah, I, um, I think there's a feedback loop that you get those early wins. You know, when I did really well in college in my first semester, um, it gave me confidence and it gave me the feedback. And when I saw people struggling the way I struggled mm -hmm. and when I saw people succeed, um, I copy their habits. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just great to have that, that support sort of system around. Me. Um, yeah, I just kept going, man. It's been I tell you what, I tell you this for free. It wasn't short. I didn't do that in like five years. Now. <laughs> right? Time is flying. Okay. Okay. So like, what led you to University of Baltimore? And in it, was your down the street. it was down the street from me. Okay. No, no when I was at BCCC, my counselor was moving to work there. And she mm -hmm. said, um, when you're done here, why don't you follow me down there? You'll really like it. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I was like, well, yeah, and plus I, I live right down the street because I was moving around a little bit back then. 
and I, and uh, it was easy to get to. And I got there, and I was like, man, everybody's like me. This is amazing. <laughs> um, I, okay. Yeah, I mean, and this was, you know, UB then we didn't, we only had, um, we only had sophomores, I mean, uh, juniors and seniors. So I got that AA at Baltimore City Community College mm-hmm. and I took it to UB. Uh, and, you know, I was, geez, I was in my 20s by then. I messed around a lot. I wasted a lot of time when I was young, but I was in my early 20s or something like that. I was in college right? That's how I grew up. Right. But it was great. We had a lot of working adults and people were in the same situation. I mean, I was paying for it myself. You know, nobody, my parents didn't pay for any of my college education or, or for anything mm-hmm. uh, because they didn't understand it. They didn't understand the value of it. It was like, uh, get a job, boy. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like, you know, better yourself and get out of this mess that you're heading toward. Don't don't dive over that cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's I mean, that's why you have the passion for the students that you work with and you can connect with them in the way that you do because you get it. Right? They're all better. They're all better people than I was at, at that age. You know, if they're 16, 17 years old, they made it farther than I did mm-hmm. in high school. I dropped out on my 16th birthday. Wow. I mean, I mean, I was gone and immediately got in trouble. Mm-hmm. So, but look um, at you now. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. But you know, but there was there was you know times along the way that you could have very well just been like, forget it. Like, I'm not going to do exactly you know what you did because that option is always there too. But the fact that you chose to push forward and you wanted something different for yourself. And now you can always say turning your test into a testimony. So now people say, you can't, you don't understand where I come from. You don't understand. Well, well, actually, <laughs> I do. I go into city schools and, and I, I always tell the story because I said, like, can you look at this, this old, this middle aged white guy up here in a suit <laughs> talking to you? And, uh, you know, I tell him the story and then all of a sudden people are listening. Mm-hmm. And I get questions, you know, I get questions mm-hmm. like, well, what were you thinking when you did this? And they want to know details, too. Like, what kind of trouble were you in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, want to I mean, I'll tell them, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, ashamed, I'm ashamed in a way of what I was doing, but I'm not ashamed of what it turned into. So that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, tell us more about because we're talking about partnering in the community specifically with educational institutions like you know I'm all, I'm always telling the nonprofit visionaries that yeah you know you have this vision and you have these these programs and services but you have to partner in the community in order to have a, a impact what types of things is you be doing or how are you partnering with community organizations we have about 15 15 core partners in the nonprofit education student support world it's been as many as 20. Some, some of them come and go. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But most of them have, um, and I could, you know, besides, besides your organization, Urban Alliance, Urban League, Baltimore Urban Debate League, uh, Code in Schools, Sister Circle, just so many, so mm-hmm. many of them. And um, we found where our skills were. Like, like, if you know what your needs are, you know, we need students. We're a university. We want, we want to recruit mm-hmm. students. Mm-hmm. So that's an easy need to fill. Mm-hmm. And then the nonprofits and the and the community partners, they need opportunities for the youth that they serve. So we just hook it up. We said we'll bring them down to campus and we'll try to get them college credit or we'll give them non-credit workshops. Maybe it's just a tour of the university, an admissions presentation, and then you can use our space, you know. That beautiful <laughs> space I'm going to talk about later about that law center, okay? I know, right? I'm I'm a little I'm a little worried, Salida. I think uh, you know it's a different world now. It might be a while till we till we get back to mm. to being like that again. But um, you know, we've been doing everything virtual for now. We're doing a middle school program right now that's twice a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some young girls, uh, at a it's a private school, but the student population is just like the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's still working out virtually. We we grew this past academic year. Good. Yeah, we Good. have um, three hundred thirty students are in dual enrollment over the past. Oh, wow! Years. It just shows place. how quickly we adjust to whatever's going on. We're going to shift real quick. 
oh yeah, I don't give up on anything. I saw that happen. I was out in front of it. And mm -hmm. the school hadn't even closed yet. And I was like, we're all going online. Let's get this together before, you know, before. Um, and it was just, you know, it was a challenge. It wasn't easy, but um, I mean, nothing, you, there's nothing that you can't do. I mean, I think about that all the time. You want to do, so I tell the students that you want this, then, then come get it and it's mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. If you don't want it, then, then here's the challenge. You know, maybe there's something else that you want. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But Absolutely. but I think I think we can solve those problems. So so our nonprofit parts. Oh, I'll throw in too. I'm also uh, president of the board of directors for the Baltimore Kids Chess League, which is five hundred one. What? Uh, CSE three nonprofit. Yes. Let me so. find out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I'm in the nonprofit world. I've never mm -hmm. chaired a board for for a nonprofit before. Uh, but it's good, and I'm already linking people up. I had a meeting with the Baltimore Urban Debate League today mm -hmm. uh, with my, my friend Colleen there, and uh, I, I said, "Look, we gotta we gotta get together. Here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna get together, we're gonna look at all the schools where we're not serving, and then we're gonna go to that school and say it's a it's a discount if you take us both. Like we both have we both have our prices wow. uh, for the services, but we'll cut you a deal if you take us both." So you gotta have that. Come on, I'm a hustler from way. I know. Back. I know. <laughs> I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler. Okay, <laughs> but you get it done, right? And I love how you said that because we were just talking about before you came on finding board members. Where do I go to get board members, and how do I get connected in the community? And just off of like you said, a partnership or or with a nonprofit that approaches you and says. You know, I'm looking for a board member. There's so many ways that you can partner with people in the community around the work, you know? Like, give us an example of a partnership, because I know you listed a couple, but give us more detail about a partnership, a nonprofit that the university works with. How do they approach you? How did, you know, like, how does that even work? And then where do they find you? And then how does it, how does it happen? They find me around the block, Selena. So come on, <laughs> I'm, hey, down, I'm down the street. I'm <laughs> down the street. You know, you know the corner. <laughs> I'm out on the corner. You know where to find me. Y'all, you see why we clicked? Y'all, you, you see why we clicked on the first day we met? Okay. Anyway, it's in a serious answer. Um, how do they? How do they find us? It's all networking. So I, uh, when I took over as director of the department, which was, you know, just about non-existent but i started going to everything there are so many like monthly conferences monthly workshops that bring people together city schools does stuff like that so your school district will be doing things and i went to all of it number one free breakfast <laughs> and then number two number two then I, I met so many people and then the word just got around so after a little while people were just uh coming up to me like Oh, hey, I know Gretchen over at Coden Schools, and she told me I need to talk to you. Um, and, and that's just been happening. The CEO of United Way of Central Maryland asked me for a meeting last week because oh, he wow. heard about us through a network of people. So we're mm -hmm. talking about doing some things with them. But it's all it's all grassroots. Like, you can't wait for people to come to you. You just got to go out. And um, I was going to say shake hands. I don't know if we can do that anymore. You can't do that now. <laughs> Fist bump or something. We can, we can. Elbow bump. Elbow bump. Oh, elbow bump so weak. It <laughs> is. But you know, that's what we got right now. So. <laughs> but it's but about, it's about, it's yeah. about going to the things. We're, we're partners with Greenmount West uh, Community Center, which is, you know, just a straight up neighborhood community center down the street from us. Mm -hmm. uh, and once again, they knew somebody who knew somebody who had heard of what we were doing um, and came to us. And I was like, oh, yeah, send your kids to me in the summertime. Well, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have something for them. Mm -hmm. The part of our mission is is to serve. It's just to serve youth, to introduce youth to opportunities, uh, educational opportunities particularly. But I'm on a lot of workforce development stuff to be more STEM 2.0. Yeah. yeah. Like everything, everything I can get involved with, with, I get involved. And if you need a board member, go join somebody else's board. I do. I, I play that trick all the time. Like, I'll join, I'll join your board if you join mine. <laughs> <laughs> This is like divine timing because that's exactly what I said. Like, if you're looking for board members, then you need to join a board. Kind of... I'll See, be sending you an email about that later. 
Yeah, look, I, yeah, you want to join my board? <laughs> I join your board. I will join your board. You join my board. I join your board. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> we're, okay. We're, we're. Look, we making connections right here, y'all. So th this is real, okay? <laughs> this is real. So, any questions from those who are watching? Do you have any questions for? For John, like, you know, because a, a number of you are working, and, and just to let you know, JB, a number of them are working with youth in, in foster care, too, you know? So I'm like, there's so many different issues and so many different, at the same time, resources that that population needs, right? So you got education, you have housing, you have uh, workforce development, you have all these different things that that population needs. And so you're going to need partnerships and collaborations in each of those areas. So do y'all have questions for JB? I mean, he was very clear too about, look, he's like, I'm going to meetings. I'm getting my, putting myself out there, meeting people, networking with people. So, and that's the same thing that you should be doing. You've got to, for people to know who you are, you've got to show up. So now when people say, who's a good partner in the community? Oh, have you met John Brenner? Okay, well you need to, and then he, he don't need to go to all these meetings no more. Now people are coming to him. Right. You need to make sure they remember you. You need, you know, you need you need to go and say something to somebody or, or make an impression where people remember you. And you know, I, I still do the old school business cards thing, but uh <laughs> what's what's new school? Is it barcodes? <laughs> yeah, it's probably some phone thing I don't understand. <laughs> I ain't there yet. The I most the most impressive thing I think you can do with networking is if somebody um, says, "Oh, you don't have any business cards, do you?" You pull out a handful, <laughs> and, and, right. and you don't you don't just hand it to them. You say, "You bet I do." <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all taking notes. JB said, <laughs> "You got to do that." You let know how it worked out for you. <laughs> so we got one of the a question. So how do you really figure out from the audience if your nonprofit is really needed? So they said, I want to start my own, but I want to know if the interest is there to serve the community. What would you suggest, JB? You got to talk to that that landscape. You know, you have to talk to the people who are who are around it. They might not be doing the thing you want to do, um, but you have to talk to people who are in that world. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I could be real formal. You know, you got to you have to do a needs assessment, but you do that by talking to people um, mm -hmm. and listening. You know, you don't tell them really what you want to do. Uh, you say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. uh, that's always been the core of our partnerships too. I say, my, you tell me what you need. My job is to make it happen. So, so you can translate that into starting a nonprofit. I think you know you ask people what they need, and then you say, you know, I think I can do that, and it'll change, right? You'll hear it. I mean, it's the worst part is you hear it, and then you're like, well, they don't really need what I'm doing anyway. Maybe I need to kind of move it over a little bit so that I can, you know, be in a better place. Mm -hmm. Get our get our passion projects together. And I'm all about passion. You know, I want to. I, I wouldn't do it if I weren't passionate. But passion projects can be dangerous because mm -hmm. then you start saying, "This is what I'm doing. You, you come to me. You, you come to me, and and I'll solve your problem." But that's, yeah. That's not how it works. Right. Really frustrated, really frustrated. You know, when when they're like, "This is what I know is needed," and I'm gonna give. You know. Here it is, and people are like, uh, "That's not what we asked for." Right. So, you know, <laughs> that that's not what we want. So that's how you, you know, as JB said, that's you got to go to where the people are who you want to serve and talk to them, and be like, you know, and that's in the in the best way to do that is through volunteering, you know, with with the organization that may serve them in some capacity or come. Everybody needs volunteers. So how what can you how can you be of service? And then be able to see from the inside what's needed and talking directly to the people that need the support so that you can fill a gap and not recreate the wheel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Talk to the audience. Talk to the, the people who provide other services. Talking mm -hmm. to kids helps us. You know, I'm like, all right, the principal can say, well, my kid needs my, my kids need X. And then I ask the student, I'm like, you really want to take this course? What, do you, what would you rather take? And then they and then they say it, and you're like, oh, we could do that, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So okay. talking talking to the people who who will be your, uh, I don't know, what's the word? It's not clients, is it? Like when your nonprofit serves somebody. I would like to. I mean, you know, we say client, but they're partners. 
Perfect. You know, they're, they're, that's how it should be. You know, they're partners. They're, you're coming in, you're providing a service that they say that they need. You're being of service, but, you know, it's a partnership. And that's how we need to look at it. Yeah. So are they in the, we got like two minutes left. Is there any last minute just, you know, suggestions, words of advice that you would give? You got two minutes. I got all night. Like, don't <laughs> don't give me that opening because I will. I will. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving till it's over. <laughs> You can go ahead and, and look, sit in the, in the um in the green room. While I'm... <laughs> I want I want walk on music next time though. Okay, I got you. You just gotta tell me what song. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll think. Because you know I'm good for it. I will do it. That's so sick. Well, um, what you, <laughs> advice? Come on, give us some advice. Some more advice. Um, so so definitely. I mean, I don't want to just repeat the things that that you've already talked about or that I've already mentioned. But I, I can't emphasize enough that you find intersections with other partners. I mean, everyone who serves anybody in this city and, you know, in Baltimore City, we have intersections. You mm -hmm. might serve foster care alumni. Um, we are educators who want them to come to the university. You might serve K through six. I want students to hear about college. <laughs> In the maternity ward, I want, I want their first. I want their first word to be college. Don't, don't say mama. Say college. Yeah. That's why I love you. Look, you know the truth, though. Um, but you find those points of intersection, and they're there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't see them right away, you just kind of keep that off to the side because it'll come. It'll come up again, where you can get involved with something. Um, Urban League was was definitely one of those examples where I really didn't see at first how we could serve, but it really just came down to giving them a, a setting where they could do what they needed to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're not gonna find that at all universities, right? No. You no. <laughs> no. I gave away hundreds of thousands of dollars of space. In space. <laughs> over the past few years. Yeah, but it all comes back, you know, and it's, it's an investment though. I, it's a, I you can get a return on investment with the partnerships you've developed. Yeah, I think so. Word word on the street grows, um, and somebody somewhere, somebody somewhere is going to remember you. Um, so I say, you know, find those points of intersection, come up with what they need and what you need. Um, and if you do go to a university, um, they're very opaque, so it, it is hard sometimes to find the right people or the right process to even get an answer on something. Um, but you got to knock on the door, or you got to know me. And I'll help. That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll be again. I'll be again. That's no, but you don't give up. You know, if, if if you got if somebody blows you off or doesn't doesn't respond to you or, or whatever, um, I mean that that means nothing. That just means it wasn't the right person. Mm -hmm. So just you know, ask somebody like, hey, you know anything about that University of Baltimore? Who who there does this? Mm -hmm. And then somebody will know. Yep. Networking, right? That's what you said. Networking. Yep. <laughs> That's the oh, word. You know. <laughs> Got to get in there. Well, thank you so much, JV, for taking the time out. And even though you're not feeling well, for coming and dropping some jewels, I, I would not be able to tell you weren't feeling well. Um, but, oh, somebody really? Say, somebody said, look, look, Ella said, no, you look great, John. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I'm here to tell you I am not feeling well. So. Look, but you can't be you get me charged up. These kind of things energize me. So I think yeah. I think that's what that's all about for me personally. That was your medicine, right? That was your, that, not your Gatorade. This was your medicine <laughs> for today. Oh, no more Gatorade. <laughs> not the Gatorade. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you some. I tell you, I'm gonna send you some teas and stuff. Help you out because we need you. We need you back to health. Okay. I'm waiting for it. I don't say no to anything free. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So I, I would text you after this. Thank you so much for joining us, JV. Thank you for having me. Um, I love you all, and, and you're doing good work, and you have a lifetime of good work to do it. So yeah, that's right. maybe I'll see you all soon. Yep. yep. Oh, look, wait a minute. Um, Sam said he has, a, he has a JV in his network too. Good. You got a JV <laughs> in your network. Awesome. Oh, and how? Okay, so people are asking, how can they reach out to you later? How oh. can they put your contact? I'm going to put it in a banner up here. Yeah, Jay Brenner at uvault.edu. Email me anytime. 
Uh, okay, y'all see that? Right. Yeah, that's it. I, I know how to spell your name, JB. Yeah. <laughs> we family. Okay, I, I know how to. I get it right. <laughs> All right, JB. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank Later. you. Later, fam. <laughs> Everybody, now you see why I love him, right? He is, is completely transparent, completely authentic, but I would have never met him if it wasn't for me tapping into my network and reaching out to my mentor to get me connected to him. So like he said, get out there. Don't be afraid. And I know, you know, y'all know what I mean, the virtual piece, you know, get out there virtually and safely social distance when you can get out there to a meeting do that but start there start planting the seeds of your network and then you know you'll reap the benefits and people will be coming to you for support so there's jb's information reach out to him um you know even though he's in baltimore you might be in another state i'm telling you you don't know who people know until you reach out to them and listen y'all know Subscribe, like, and share. So if this was helpful to you, subscribe if you're looking at it through YouTube and, and like my page if you're on Facebook and share it with other people who might find this information helpful. Don't be afraid. Don't be a stranger. Please do that. Make sure you go um, and send me that email. So I'm going to put this here for if you want a 15 minute consultation so you can get a link so we can you know be specific about as specific as we can be in 15 minutes now if you know you have a lot of questions to ask then we need to book a one hour consultation okay and then you can do that at um on my website shalitaoneal.com another announcement so y'all know we have the visionaries of color nonprofit summit that we do every spring and fall so this may may 15th we have our next one coming up it's going to be virtual and if you attended anyone in the past you know how nourishing healing and informative these events are so make sure that you go um and i'm, I'm gonna put the website in here too because i don't think i um have it um i want you to go on the website and make sure you sign up so that when when it's time for registration opens that you can register like i said it's may 15th i want you to be able to come in we got some new keynote speakers elders nonprofit elders in the community who are going to come pour into visionaries of color we've got funders we've got a nonprofit attorneys we've got other nonprofit visionaries who have been able to build their organization so come 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 in a space where you can learn and be supported at the VOC, okay? So we have that and y'all know we've changed the schedule. So our next hashtag nonprofit no filter live discussion is actually going to be in April. So it's gonna be, hold up, don't get me to lying y'all. April 20th, I think, hold on, hold on. Yep, April 20th. 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And that one is going to be, I, I really want to stay on this community building, this partnership building topic for a minute because it's so important. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm going to announce the speaker because I'm still confirming her, confirming the speaker, but either way, we're going to be talking about building community partnerships with state and local entities. Because then once when we talk about funding, that's where the, the whole fee for service and contracts and subcontracts come in. That needs to be part of your funding repertoire. You need to be having those types of um, income to be able to support your organization too. But you also need to know how to approach those entities and how to work with them. So I'll make sure that we'll be talking about that next time. So make sure you bring your questions, okay, for that. And that's all I got for y'all. If you need me, reach out. Don't be a stranger. You know how to get me. Stop trying to do everything by yourself and get you a coach like me so that we can change the world. All right. So until next time, we're going to be real. We're going to have fun. We're going to get results. And I want y'all to be blessed and take care of yourself. Okay. All right. I'll see y'all soon.